you're looking for how to start a clothing brand with no money, you came to the right place. In this video, you're gonna learn step by step how to start a clothing brand using a print on demand platform so you don't have to carry any inventory. And with the platform I recommend, you won't even have to do any customer support. And if you're an artist, this is great for you too because they have more than just clothes that you can put your art on and sell. Now for this tutorial, we're gonna be using the T-Chip print on demand platform. And I'll even show you why I recommend T-Chip if you're a beginner starting out in any type of e-commerce. A lot of people talk about Shopify and I actually love Shopify, I use Shopify, but I'll show you later why I think for beginners T-Chip is actually a lot better than Shopify. And I'll even show you some income proof so you can see why I'm qualified to talk about this in the first place. And then we'll dive right in and I'll show you how to create a name for your brand, how to set up your store, and a few options when creating a logo. Then we'll go into the best ways for creating design and there's a ton of ways to create designs so I'm gonna show you a bunch of options. Next I'll show you how to upload designs and how to design your store so it looks really professional. And last but not least, the most important part, I'll show you a couple different ways to get traffic to your store. I'll touch on a variety of ways and then I'll go step by step and show you how to create Facebook ads for it. So if you follow along, by the end of this video, you're gonna have a fully functioning clothing brand ready to go. So let's get into it. So a little bit about me, I'm a full-time e-com entrepreneur. Uh, I've been doing this for over six years now. I've been a top seller on Teespring, on Gear Launch, and on T-Chip, which is the platform I'm gonna show you how to use, and even Shopify. I've had a couple stores on Shopify and it's the main platform I use now. T-Chip even uh, sent me this sweet shirt when I sold over 10,000 shirts on their platform. Uh, all together with my online sales during my career, I've done well over five, six million dollars in sales. So let's hop into my computer right now and I'll show you some income proof. So this is my T-Chip Pro account, and as you can see here, I've done almost $200,000 in, this is gross profit. So this is the profit after they removed cost of goods, like the cost of the shirt, but this doesn't include ads. So after ads, it's probably like $120,000. So I used T-Chip for a while, and I do think they're the best for beginners, but right now I use Shopify, mainly because it's more advanced, but... I'll get into why I really think if you're a beginner, if you're new, or if you have some kind of low budget, you should just stick with T-Chip until you learn. Mainly it's because of cost, but everything in T-Chip also kind of just works, so it's gonna be easier when you're getting started. So this is one of the Shopify stores I have now. This one I run basically by myself with three VAs, and VA stands for virtual assistant if you don't know. So it's doing pretty well. I'll refresh here so you can see that it's real. And profit for the store is around 20%. Let me go in and I'll actually go to my profit calculator. So this is the last 30 days. Uh, net margin is actually 17%. And that's because we had a lot of refunds because of the pandemic that's going on. And I'll refresh that. And yeah, so you can see I, I've been doing this for a while. I use Shopify mainly because there's a lot more options, but the costs are a lot bigger. As you see here, my costs are almost $1,500 a month to run this, where with T-Chip Pro, you get basically everything I have here for $50 a year. So if we go to my custom spend, you'll see the things that I pay for. The, the Shopify plan, I pay about $75 a month. It's almost $400 in a bunch of different Shopify apps. OmniSend is my email autoresponder, that's $150 a month. And then uh, for my support virtual assistant, it's $90 a week. So most of this stuff is provided to you by, uh, by T-Chip. So if you're a beginner and spending a lot of money is a big deal to you, you're definitely gonna wanna start with T-Chip, learn the trade, and then eventually move on to a platform like Shopify. So a couple of the benefits of T-Chip over Shopify. T-Chip does all your customer support. You don't have to worry about that. If you use Shopify, you're gonna have to go hire some virtual systems to do your customer support. You're gonna have to get a time tracking system to keep track of them. And you're gonna have to get a help desk system for them to answer emails on. Not only that, you're gonna have to train them as well. Now, Teachup has some of the lowest prices on print on demand items. Now, Shopify has a lot more variety because you can choose different print on demand suppliers and add them as apps and actually sell all of them. But Teachup has almost every product available on Shopify. And for whatever reason, a lot of them are even cheaper. A basic t-shirt on T-Chip is like $5.50. Now, T-Chip also has their own email autoresponder 
calendar system included. For Shopify, you'd need to get your own and figure all that out. As you saw for the store that I just showed you, I pay $150 a month for that store. On one of my other stores, we pay $350 for that email autoresponder a month. You see, when it comes to price and value, T-Chip's a no-brainer. It's only $50 for the whole year, or Shopify with all the apps, plans, hiring support, it's gonna cost you over $500 a month. And to be honest, if you just wanna test shirt designs, and you don't even want to create a brand, T-Chip is actually free. The $50 a year includes the hosting and a bunch of other things that you get that you're going to need if you want to create your own brand. Okay, now that you see why I always recommend T-Chip for beginners, let's go in and get started. So let's pick a name and create a store. So the first thing you got to do is look for a niche. If you already have an idea, you know the brand, you want to start, awesome, you're good. If not, you're going to want to do one of two things. You're either going to have to Look for a niche that you might be interested in that you think will be profitable, or you can just create a general store. So a general store will just have any kind of t-shirts available. It's a little harder to brand and build customer loyalty, but if you're not sure what you want to do yet, you can test so many different designs on it. It's good because it opens up your options. You're not limited to a certain niche or a certain style of clothing. It might actually be a better thing to do if you're a complete newbie because then it opens up your possibilities and you can go to any niche that you think will be profitable and try t-shirt designs or designs on anything else. So for this example, I'm going to be building a niche store and I'm going to create a streetwear brand in the entrepreneur success niche. So the first thing I do when I'm creating a new brand is I go to namelix.com and I look for a name there. On Namelix, you can just enter keywords and it'll generate a name for you. So let's enter Hustle. Then you pick the length of the name. I'm just gonna select them all. So name style, I think I'm just gonna go with multiple words. So the ones on top are premium, that means they've already been registered, but you can buy them for expensive. And then the bottom ones are all free. So let's look for a name we like. So I see this Boss Hustle is available. I'm just going to go with that one. Sounds pretty good. You can actually click on it and you can actually purchase the logo over here if you want, but we're going to do something else for the logo. Next, what we got to do is see if this name is available. Typically, if it's here, it means it's available, but let's double check because if social media and having those names are important to you, there's a tool that I like to use that checks them all at once. So let's go to namecheck.com and let's type in Boss Hustle. And it's gonna give us, uh, and it's gonna let us know if the .com is available. Oh, it's already taken. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> it also lets us know if it's available in social media usernames. But, since the .com is taken, if you're really trying to create a brand, I always say go for .com. If not, if .com isn't that important to you, uh, you might even want to do US because then it tells people who are buying things from you that it's based in the United States since there's a lot of people who sell things from China these days. Like me, I do that. That co isn't bad either, but everything else is taken over here. So let's, let's see if we can find another one. Hustle made. I like that. If this is taken too, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> Already taken? Wow, okay. You know what? I'm just gonna go with that co then or something else. That co stands for commerce, so that should be fine. I'm just gonna do a hustlemade.co. So let's go into T-Chips platform. I'll show you how to get signed up and let's go register this hustlemade.co name. Okay, so you're gonna wanna go to tchip.com slash sellers. And I have my other account, but since I wanna show you how it's done, I'm gonna try to create everything from, uh, from scratch. Okay, just put in a password. Click register, then check your email to confirm. Uh, I'll do that later. So where you're gonna wanna go is domains. Hello, English. And right now you only see the tchip.com domain because if you want, you can put shirt designs directly on their website and you don't you won't even have to pay anything for it but we're gonna to wanna to create our own domain. 
Website's name is going to be Hustle Made. I actually like it more than the Hustle Boss one. Social media, forget that. We'll put all this stuff in after. And let's just proceed to domain name registration. They have .co. So, what is it? HustleMade.co. HustleMade.co. Boom. So we can just proceed to payment. And this is where you're going to put in your credit card info and pay the $50. So registering the domain costs $50, but with it, it comes your own branding, your own store, and a lot of support. Boom. Okay. So they received the request. Please allow up to three hours for it to be processed. So they're going to create my store in the background. So while they're doing that, let's go to the next step. And the next step is creating a logo. There's a ton of ways to do it. When I made a video about that before, a lot of professional logo makers were laughing at me because I showed them a free way how to do it. And I know a lot of people don't want to pay for Illustrator or pay for somebody to make the logo. So that's why I was making that video. But there's a ton of different ways you could do it. So the first way, if you're a beginner, that I'd recommend for you to do it is with Fiverr.com. It's not free, but it's really cheap. I'll show you the free way after. So Fiverr is basically a gig website, a gig marketplace that you can hire designers to create a logo for you. So if we want a logo, let's just go in and type in logo. And so all these people will make a logo for you, right? Just pick a designer that's highly rated and look through their designs and see if you like their stuff. Now these are a little pricey, so if you have a budget, you can just go in here and set your max price. So let's do $10. Fiverr is called Fiverr because originally everything was $5. Professional business logo, $10. So we can go in here, check this guy out. Yeah, not bad. He, he looks like he's just using templates and I can even show you how to like pick and I'll even show you after how to pick out your own templates. But basically, if you like this thing, you just click continue and pay the $10 and describe what you want the logo to say and things like that. If you want something a little bit more unique, a little bit more professional, you're going to have to pay a little bit more. So we can change the budget to, let's say, $50. So this guy over here, he does three concepts and then you can have unlimited revisions. So if you're willing to pay 50 bucks, that might, that might be the way to go. And he's got some pretty cool logos. Not bad. But yeah, basically you just pay the $50, tell him what you want. And in whatever days that he's saying, seven days deliver in seven days, you'll have a professional unique logo. The next way to create a logo is if you want to create it yourself. If you want to be a designer, you know, since you're getting into this design space, you might actually want to learn some design skills. You would want to use Adobe Illustrator. It's similar to Photoshop, but Illustrator works with vector images. So logos and things with less colors, they can stretch out without losing any pixels. So the quality is a lot better. That's why that's what Illustrator is specifically made for. I know a lot of people in their beginners, they want to spend the least amount of money as possible. The main problem with Illustrator is that it costs money. If that's not a big deal for you and you want to invest in yourself and invest in learning design skills, you might want to just pay for the Adobe Creative Suite. Now, all the apps together are $53 a month, but if you're a student, you can actually get them all for $20 a month. And I'm not a student and I just told them I was and I was able to get it. I don't know if that's going to still be available, but you might want to check that out because with this, you're going to be able to learn a lot of skills. You're going to get Photoshop, Illustrator, and if you want to do video editing and things like that, you also have Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects in their suite as well. But if you're like really broke and you still want to grab some of this software, just, just go on YouTube and look up how to torrent software. I'm not going to show you in this video how to do it, but it's basically pirating software. I used to do that when I was younger, but now I have money so I can just pay for it. Another way to do it is to just buy a logo template on graphicriver.net. You're still going to need Illustrator to edit the template and it won't be as unique as if you create it yourself or have somebody create a unique one for you, but they have a ton of options and they're pretty cheap. I actually use them a lot for a lot of different things. This site is basically a marketplace for already done templates. So if we put in, I don't know, 
streetwear logo. It'll show us a bunch of uh, a bunch of examples and how much they cost. Right, nine dollars, sixteen dollars, and these are done. The thing is, you would need to have Illustrator installed to be able to edit it. Not bad. That's a cool one. All right. So yeah, if you want to go this route, you can just go in, look for the kind of logo that you want, buy it, and then edit it. Then the last way is the free way, and I'll show you how to do that now. So basically, you go to this website called logomaker.thehoth.com, and this is a free logo maker. You'll be able to make a logo here, and it'll spit out your file with a bunch of different file types and transparency, so you can just upload onto your website and use it for a bunch of different other things. So basically, you just put in your text. So we're going to go hustle made. I don't need to put the .co. And uh, you just choose. You can choose your font over here. Uh, I like my logos really simple. I mean, it depends on what. It depends on what kind of brand it is. I'm just gonna go with this. Keep it simple. Let me get black as well. And then you can go in here, add a shape, add a symbol, and edit the shape however you want. So let's go click out a symbol. You just go in here and choose your category, and it'll bring up a bunch of different symbols you can use. They even have letters, so ours would be like an H. This right here, get rid of that one, and it's interesting because you can you can edit this however you want. Oh. So you can go in, change that color. Do that. Change that color. Do whatever you want. Change that color to whatever you want. You can even hide parts of the image. So you can make your icon however you want. Now I like really simplistic logos, so I'm not even gonna use the icon. I'm gonna use just the letters as the logo. At least for this example. And for a streetwear brand, I think the simplistic factor actually goes a long way. You can just preview it here if you want. And it shows your logo on a bunch of different things. And then oh, they're trying to sell us a domain. Nope. Then you just click save and download. You need to put your email in. Save and continue. And they're going to send your logo to your email. All right, here it is. So I'm just going to save it to my desktop and then I'll extract it and here it is in a couple different file types. All right, so this is with the white background, blank background and then this one's a vector image that you can edit with Adobe Illustrator. Okay so now we got a logo, our website's probably still being created so let's go ahead and move to the next part. Let's start creating some designs. So the first way to do it, again Fiverr, you can just get designs pretty cheap on there. So when you're on Fiverr you can type in t-shirt design or anything else if you want to do more than just t-shirts. And a bunch of people come up and just like a logo there's a bunch of different prices too, so you're gonna to wanna to put in your budget. Let's do 10 bucks. And you're gonna to wanna to go through and see their designs and see if they fit the kind of look you're going for. And then same thing, you just hire them, you tell them what you want. And right here, this guy offers two day delivery in two days, it'll be ready. So previously I made a design here, so I'll show you how that process went. So before I ordered a design with this guy, I just kind of like the look of his designs. 
and uh, and I actually gave him a lot of instructions. So I made it made his life pretty simple. A lot of these guys will be creative if you want them to be. But I already gave him a quote that I wanted and the look that I wanted. So here's basically what I said to him. If you're looking for what you want to say to these designers, you can just pause right here and write that down. And uh, here's a pro tip. I told him I'm testing out his gig. If it looks good, I'll buy higher price gigs in the future. So, so that's an incentive for him to do a really good job in this design. And this is what he delivered. Honestly, I didn't like it too much, but I didn't want to bother a guy. I was just doing this just to show people. So, so that's one way to go about it. Another way is to use Canva.com. So Canva is my favorite free image tool. I use it all the time. Sometimes you don't need something more complicated like Photoshop because Canva just kind of holds your hand throughout the process and makes things like super simple. So let me show you how to design something on Canva. So Canva's free, you just click sign up with Google. I already have an account, so I'm just going to log in. Got it, thanks. Okay, so here you're going to want to go and just click create a design. They're already recommending me t-shirt because I've already used it for that before. But normally it's under prints right there, t-shirt. So you click that and it's going to show you a new t-shirt design that you can create. So this is the one I used before, but basically there's a bunch of different designs here. And you can add text and add everything you want. You can add images on it. Sweet, so let's use this one. We just go in here and edit the words. That's basically it. <laughs> uh, you can edit everything else. Canva's really good. Like, see, you can edit the colors. You can add shapes, add elements. I kind of like this the way it is. So I can actually just click print t-shirts and it'll show you a sample. My car dream big. And you can buy the shirt right from here, but we're not doing that. So we can just click download. If you really like Canva and you're planning to use it, you might want to consider paying for it because then you can make the size whatever you want. You can get a transparent background. You could also just create a random email and try it for 30 days, then cancel it every 30 days if you want. But I have a designer, so I don't typically use Canva for t-shirt designs or anything transparent. So I don't, I don't actually pay for it just because my designer does all my designing for me. And I'll show you how to hire a designer in the next step. So I'm just going to download this PNG file. But it's actually going to come with the white background. So in a future step, I'm going to show you how to remove the background for free as well. Okay. So here's our design. We're going to use it later. Another free app that you could use is Word Swag. And you can use that like right on your phone. So you could literally be on the toilet and creating designs that you're going to make money from. I'm actually not too sure if it's free. If it's not free, it's like $3, like not a month, like literally just $3. And a cool thing about that, I mean, outside of just being on your phone and you can just be creating designs wherever you are, is that the backgrounds will automatically come transparent. So you don't have to worry about that. You might need to resize it after and I'll show you how to do that after. The most professional way to do it is to hire a designer, but that's expensive. If you saw it in my expense spreadsheet earlier, I pay my designer about $480 a month, which is <laughs> ridiculously cheap for a full-time designer. But, you know, they're in the Philippines. He loves his job. He makes a great salary. I give him bonuses whenever his designs do really well. So this isn't really for beginners, but it might be good to think about it down the line. And I'll just show you how I go about doing that as well. So there's two places you can get designers. One is Upwork.com. So you hire freelancers here and you can hire freelancers from everywhere in the world. 
Now, I typically hi like hiring people from the Philippines. I work really well with them, and they ask for a lot less money, like four to seven dollars an hour. But basically, you just create a account on Upwork and click post a job. Then you put in a whole job description. Create new job. You can choose how much you want them to work. Let's do short term, continue. Post hiring a designer for print on demand clothing line. Job category, you can go Job category, you can pick, there's more options. I don't know why they actually knew I was going for a designer. Maybe they they could just tell, I don't know. Fashion design, illustration. Uh, a lot of this doesn't even matter. I'm just gonna go graphic design next. And then you just put a description here. So this is basically what a description looks like. If you're trying to hire a designer, maybe pause and take a look at it. I even wanted to explain the job role more, so I went to loom.com and I created a video showing him exactly what he's gonna be working on and things like that. Then click next. And ask you to pick what type of project it is. Like if you wanna hire if you want to hire him like one time and just have a set base price, you can. Next. This is where you pick the expertise he wants. I think this is what I picked over here. Any additional skills. And if you're looking what kind of experience you're looking for. I always click entry level because intermediate and expert, they're going to charge way too much. And... <laughs> I've gotten some designers that are really good, but they're entry level and they charge very, very little. And this is where you pick where you want the designers to be. But typically what I do is I just go in and I'll just put in Philippines because I like working with uh, Filipino virtual, with Filipino virtual assistants. So I click next. Visibility, choose that, that's all fine. You can put in your budget, so you can pay a fixed price if you want them, hey, come in, do 20 designs for $200 or whatever. Or you can put an hourly budget, pay by the hour, and you can set how much your range is, how long you expect the project to last, how many hours they're gonna be working on. I just put don't add, just so I can see what they'll put up. Next. and. And then you just post your job and a lot of applicants would just come in wanting to work with you. The other way to hire somebody is using this website called onlinejobs.ph, which is basically the same thing, but it's only people in the Philippines. And you just go through kind of the same process and you end up hiring somebody through there. Now, the good thing about Upwork is Upwork will even do the time tracking for you. They'll do screenshots to make sure they're working right and they'll track your workers' time but onlinejobs.ph, you have to set all that up yourself. Like I use Time Doctor and Hub Staff to track their time. So if you want an all in one thing when you're hiring, go for Upwork. So the last option I have listed is to partner up with an artist. So maybe you have a friend or somebody that you know that wants to make money off their art, their artist, but they're not technical people. They literally just want to draw and do that kind of stuff. So you can partner up with them and do some kind of profit share. That's up to you how you do it. But that'll be cool because then you have like a really good artist who you're not paying anything for. You're just going to pay them after you guys are splitting up the money who will just give you constant good designs. So that's another idea. Partner up with a friend or something that's an artist. You handle the business and the ad side and all that and then they'll just do the art for you. So our domain isn't ready yet. So what I'm going to do is just use a store I made previously to show you guys the next step. And the next step is just to upload your designs and edit your store. So I'm in my main account when we're gonna upload the design that we just previously made on Canva. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of that background. So you can just go to Google and literally just type in free background remover. And they have a bunch. So the one I like the most is this Luna Pick. They usually have the best free tools online.
and boom, they removed the background. Let's just click save image as. and it saves the image for you with no background. Now, the other thing you're gonna have to do if you're using the free version of Canva is resize the image to make it a little bit bigger. And for that, I like to go to imageresizer.com slash image enlarger. Select the image. We're using that. And let's just make it 200% bigger. And click enlarge image. Download it. Sure. Yeah, the problem with the free version of Canva is when uploading t-shirts, they only give you the small file type. So to skip these two steps, I would definitely recommend at least just getting the free trial and canceling it before if you really don't want to pay the $15 a month or however much Canva charges. Okay, so when you're back on T-Chip, go to Create Campaign. And here you can pick which product you want to put your design on. Right, so they have a little bit of everything. They have all over print t-shirts. They have the classic t-shirts, which is $6. Depending on how much you want to build your brand, I would recommend the premium fit t-shirt because it just feels a lot better. This Fruit of the Loom is kind of crappy. But if you're just trying to bust out designs to see winners and churn and burn, you might just want to go with the classic t-shirt. But there's a lot more. There's hoodies, there's sweatshirts, there's all over print hoodies, there's shoes, there's even masks. These are probably a great seller right now. There's hats, ties, phone cases, tons of things. Purses, pillowcases, beach towels, mugs. You can literally sell anything. That's why, that's why this is great for artists. You can just put your art on any of this stuff. Wall tapestries, wow, really good price for wall tapestries. Comforters, duvet covers, aprons, quilts, canvas wraps, and even jewelry. Yeah, I mean, t chips really outdoing itself. But for this example, let's just pick a classic t shirt and let's pick the hoodie as well, just so I can show you that you can do more than one. So, as you can see, you can do more than one thing on each of these. And let's just upload the artwork. Put it right here. And then you can also do multiple colors. So let's get rid of white. Let's do black. And if you want, you can do more than one color as well. Charcoal gray. You can see how it looks over here. And let's do the same thing for here. Black. And just keep it black for now. And then you can also add a couple extra product mockups. Let's do this and let's do this one over here. Confirm. And then under the classic t shirt, we can add some extra mockups. Let's do this one and let's do. here confirm click continue pricing you can set how much you're gonna sell sell it for and this is just how many sales you're expecting this is just to estimate how much profit you're gonna make for the classic t-shirts I would actually probably recommend selling these for like 19 I mean you can if you find a really good design you can sell it for more but the classic t-shirts aren't that great so normally I would actually offer both that and the premium and have a price difference. So somebody who just wants to pay less for just the design on the crappy t-shirt, they can. Hooded sweatshirt. This is a little pricey. I would recommend you selling that for like $40. Continue and then you set a title. Let's call it work hard, dream big. Then add your description. So like I said, if you don't want to get your own domain and pay the 50 bucks, you could actually just sell these on T-Chip's own website. It's just, you know, it's not a good way to brand. 
So the previous one I did was called Hustle Locker, so I'm just gonna pick that as a domain. And if our new brand isn't ready yet, I'm just gonna use Hustle Locker for the rest of the examples. So just add the name here, work hard, dream, big. Now storefront is a collection, like if you want this to be displayed in a collection, I made a couple different collections over here. I just click on the new one. And you can even put tags that'll help you categorize everything. Let me just put entrepreneur. Sure. So conversion traction, you can skip that for now. You can also add related products to the campaign. So like these are some of the other designs I made before. So you can add that as related products. So then it'll kind of just show as a related product and it might make you, it might help you make extra sales. Put in if you want to make it private or public already, and you can even put upsells. This is all stuff that if you were doing it through Shopify, you'd have to pay for extra apps to do this. And then teach it, but does it all for you. I think even if you don't select it, it's gonna already help you with that. But if you want to select specific upsells, like say one shirt goes with a different mug or different shirt or something like that, you can use this. They even do email upsells and order confirmation email upsells. And then with the upsell, you can set a discount. Like, hey, if you, since you bought that, here's $5 off this. Post sale email upsell. You add the discount you want. Five bucks, sure. Order confirmation upsell, it's another type of upsell. Oh, you can select three of them. Okay, so you can add your upsells here. It'll help you make more sales. And then you just click launch campaign. You can also change the default product or side. Like say you wanted the hoodie to show first. Or if you have multiple colors, you can show this color first. Let's, uh, let's show this color first. And then you can just click launch campaign. And boom, it's live. All right, it's got everything here. So this is what your store is gonna look like too when it's ready. They even have a phone number they can call for support and this is done all by them. You don't even have to change anything. The only thing I did to edit anything here and I'll show you how to do that is create these links and also add the logo. And like I said, this is a previous store I created just because the other store isn't even ready yet. And here you can see it on the mockups on your on your models. Okay, so now that you know how to upload the designs, let's go in and edit the store so it looks professional. So this right here is the finished product. I'm gonna show you, but I'm gonna delete everything so that I can show you how to start start from scratch. So I can show you how, how it works when you're starting from scratch. The only things I'm gonna leave in is these designs. I already show you how to upload designs. So basically I had other designs created and I just uploaded them all. But yeah, so what you wanna do is go to domains and then and then click details on the domain that you want. So once we're here, we have the website name. We already set that. And then you can add some custom tags. I added hoodies, shirts, and sweatshirts. It's a custom tag. And this is what shows up right here, right? So you can create some custom tags if you want, and these custom tags, it's talking about this part over here. Category tags, so here we just used entrepreneur executive jobs, but we can use some custom tags if that's what we want to show up on our menus. And I'll show you what I mean now. So we use the category tag entrepreneur for this. So under custom navigation, we can click add main navigation and ask to search our tags. So if we put entrepreneur, and I guess we have we need two tags for it. So let's go, what was the other tag we use? Executive. So add executive, click save changes. Changes have been saved. When we refresh it, Shirts, sweatshirts, and hoodies are gonna be gone. It's gonna say entrepreneur and executive. 
right? So it depends on what you want here. If you want categories like hoodies or t-shirts, you would want to go in here and add that tag. So like t-shirts. That's why I had the custom tag created for shirts. And then you can add under main navigation shirts. Now every design you have that's tagged with entrepreneur will show up when you click that. See? Then every design that you have that's tagged with shirts will show up as well. So I tagged these with shirts before when I uploaded them. Okay, so that's the navigation. So on your social media, you can add all your social media over here and it'll show up in the bottom. Then you can add a banner image. But before that, let me show you how to add a logo. So this is the logo. This is the other one that I had. Let me just change it. Let's just put our new logo. I'm going to click that one that we downloaded and created. So made, click save changes. Changes have been save. Now if we refresh it, it's got our new logo over here. Next, let me show you how to create one of these banners. So right here it says change because I already uploaded one before. But if you haven't uploaded one yet, it's just gonna be offering you for you to upload it. So to create a banner like that, we need two things. So we need these mockups, and then we need to add these mockups to Canva to create the banner. So let me show you where I get these professional mockups for free. Go to placeit.net. Now I have an account for Placeit because I use this a lot, but if you don't, you just want to type in free and whatever kind of mockup you want. So t-shirt mockup right there. And any one of these that say free on the top left, you'll be able to get for free. So let's look for something that kind of looks like streetwear-ish. Now I think depending on the month or whatever, they are always changing which mockups they let you get for free and you're pretty limited on it. Like if you pay for it, you're able to get mockups that already have the background removed and things like that. Typically, you don't have that if you're using the free version and you're going to have to remove the background yourself. So, so if you want to skip a step, you might want to just pay for it. I'm just going to do that because I don't want to go through the hassle of removing the background. I already showed you guys how to do that. So after fumbling around, I found this mock-up that I like. Like I said, see the background's already removed. That's the benefit of getting the premium plan. If not, you're going to have to remove the background yourself. But basically, all you have to do is click Upload Image. Find the image we created. And then you can make it bigger or smaller. And place it wherever. Looks cool. You can also pick the shirt color. But I'm just going to do black. And then you just click download download now it's gonna process your mock-up and then they'll let us know when it's ready so before that I found the other one that I like also blank background and just click upload image I'm gonna use one of the designs that I had made previously nice click download download now then this one's ready so I just click it to download and I'm just going to save it right on the desktop. This one, almost ready. Click to download. Download right on the desktop. Okay, now that we have these, we can go to canva.com and create our banner. So for this, we're, so for this what we're going to want to do is click create a design and click custom dimensions. And now we have to put the width and the height. So for this banner, the width is 1127. And the height is 204. Click create design. And now we have a blank canvas that we can play around with. So we can go to photos 
and we can pick any of these photos that we want to put and use as the background. They, you can search for something. You can just go looking for something. So this one's already here that I used before, so I'm just going to use this one. And then we can stretch it. I like the graffiti style here. And we can even add effects and filters to it. So I'm going to use a filter to make it black and white, darkened a little bit. Okay. And then we can go to uploads and we can upload the mock-up we just created. This one and then the other one's already here. Let's go ahead and put this in. And you can stretch it however you want. Looking at it now, it probably actually would have been better if it was like a lighter t-shirt or something with this black background. But whatever, this is just an example. And then let's put the other one in. And we can add some text. Text. You can pick one that's already ready. Or you can just create it on your own from scratch. When you add the text, you can also just choose the font as well. So everything here is customizable. So let's go find something that looks cool. So let's grab this one here and let's change the words. Then we can make it longer. bigger too and align to the middle now we can change each of these fonts if we want but I don't mind these fonts so I'm just gonna keep them the same what I do want to do is add a drop shadow and the way to add a drop shadow here is to click duplicate bring it close to it right, and then you want to change the color whatever color you want the drop shadow to be oh. And I'm going to send it backwards. And now I'm just going to position it behind just so it has a little bit of a drop shadow. You can barely see it, <laughs> but it's there. Okay, so here we just click download. And I actually want to make the file type PNG JPEG for this because it's a more complicated design. So we want a little bit smaller. Click download. And now we just go back here. Back to editing the domain, click change, and upload our new banner. It's very similar to the other one. I was just showing you the process of how to do it. Okay, and next is these product collections. So let me actually show you how this is looking right now without the collections. Save it, you refresh. So without the collections, that's all it shows. Uh, it's getting there, but it, you know, we have the logo. Uh, we put a couple of links up here. And it's got mainly it's the recommended shirts. So to create collections, what you want to do is go to storefronts. I'm not sure why they call collections storefronts, but that's what they call it. So you go here and then you click create storefront. And you can call your collection whatever you want. And then under URL, you're going to want to pick the URL. Trending. You can even put its own banner here. And it'll tell you the recommended dimensions if you want to create your own banner using the same process that we just used. And you can add different campaigns here. So let's click Add Campaign. And it's going to pull up all the designs that we have uploaded already. If you don't see the design, you just type it in and it'll come up. Work hard, dream big, 
Okay, I'm gonna add that one too, sure. Done. Actually, let's add, uh, let's add four designs. Let's see, okay. Public, create storefront. And boom, so I just made this collection, it's called Trending. And basically it has all the designs that we just added. So now we can go back to domains, details. And under product collections, collection one left banner. We can click to activate it. So we choose storefront as collection type. And we're gonna choose the collection we just created called trending. So here's, here's the products in it. We add the title, I just put in trending. Call to action shop now is fine and then you have to upload two images so here it tells you the dimensions and we're gonna have to go ahead and create these images in canva so before we go to canva let's actually go and create some mock-ups for these collections we could use the previous mock-ups we made but i think using a new one will be better plus we can have a background here so let's go back to place it then we'll go in click upload image let's upload this design we made change the color of the shirt too dark for that image then we'll just click download download now it's going to process and when we do that let's go to canva click create a design custom dimensions and we're going to do custom dimensions and the custom dimensions are 496 by 758 for desktop and 375 by 600 for mobile. 496 by 758. 496 by 758. Create the design. Let's go back to place. It should be done. Click to download. Let's go ahead and save it on the desktop. Go back here, we're going to uploads. Literally here we just needed Canva to make the proper dimensions. Click the mock-up we just made. Then go ahead and put it in here. And then we kind of stretch it however we'd like. Let's make it bigger so it shows the shirt better. Just like that, click download. We're gonna do JPEG again, download. On title, we can call it whatever we want. So, desktop collection image right side. So, I think it was right side, right? That's saved. So, we go back to managing our domain. Under desktop view, click upload. And we'll put that in there. Let's go back, click new, custom dimensions, 375 by 600, 600, go to uploads, should already be there, just add it. Click download, JPEG download. Pick that same thing except it's called mobile. Let's call it mobile. Save. Go back into manage your domain, upload that one. <coughs> Okay, now we're gonna save. Here it is. So that's how it comes out looking. We wrote trending shop now, and the image is over here. This is how it looks in mobile. That's what the website looks in like in mobile. Okay. 
So that's how you set it up with the collection so it looks better. So under Manage Domain, I'm just going to add the previous images that I've had before just to speed things up a bit. So you can add up to nine collections with banners. So this one's for the middle banner. And uh, just click new for that one. It's already in there. And here it tells you, here it'll tell you this, the size. See the size is different for the middle banner on desktop. And then this one's very similar. I made a I made some different images for these. Save changes. And that's that's what it looks like. Okay, so basically your site's looking good. It's ready to go. If you want to try it out, go ahead, play around with it. You can even order a shirt if you want. It's a card, see? They upsell you over here. You're giving like a $3 discount over here. Uh, then you can go to cart, proceed to checkout. They even have features here that help you make sales. This is where your customer will enter their shipping address, payment info, and place the order. Okay, so next let me show you a couple of ways that you can drive traffic to your website. So there's tons of ways to do it, so I'm just going to touch base on a couple of ways to do it for free because I know a lot of people who are beginners, they don't want to spend any money. And the first two ways is to use TikTok or Instagram to create a brand page and build up the page that way. TikTok is new and everyone's kind of growing quick on it. I've seen a couple of brands doing really well on there. I'll show you a couple of examples. So if getting free traffic is important to you, this might be a good way to go about it. Here's a TikTok page for Neo Tees or Neo Tees. I'm not sure how you say it, but they're a really good brand. They're really utilizing TikTok properly. They've got 92,000 followers, 2.7 million likes, and they sell green tea. This is the desktop, so you can't see, but typically they have the link here where you can go in and buy buy some of their teas. So basically what they do is just post videos of tea and educate people on tea. And people will check out their teas and eventually purchase something. So I know this is a little different than what we're going for. So what I'd recommend is if you're an artist or something, you create like an artist page and then drive traffic that way, create some TikToks. This is a whole, you know, it's a whole other thing to learn, but it seems pretty worth it. Here's another example that I just found where somebody's trying to sell clothes this way. This is someone who's creating a streetwear brand, it seems to, and he basically just makes videos of his designs. Fitting it out, you letting the scouts outside, you running the scouts. Another way is with Instagram, and it's the same concept. You want to build up a brand page and use your page to drive traffic to your store. So here's an example I found truckers.daily underscore. So basically they just do trucker t-shirts. They should actually use T-Chip because they're using Shopify and this is basic. It doesn't even look as good as the website we just created. And what they did is they grew their page by just posting videos and pictures of trucks because their niche is trucking, you know, and they just use the right hashtags. So that's something you could do is grow an Instagram page for your niche and sprinkle in some of your designs in there and tell people to go check out your stuff after it starts growing and you get some natural organic traffic. The third free traffic method I'm going to talk about is to basically just list your designs on marketplaces like eBay and Etsy. So what you would want to do is create an eBay account and T-Chip at the moment doesn't have anything that automatically integrates. I know some other print on demand suppliers do, but T-Chip doesn't. So what you want to do is create your mock-up, upload it to eBay or Etsy, and when somebody buys it, you would actually go to T-Chip and just create an order and put their address in, basically drop ship from your T-Chip store to them. So that's another way to get free traffic. I'm sure there's more. I'm not really a specialist when it comes to free traffic. I use paid traffic a lot, 
So that's why I'm going to show you how to set up a Facebook ads account and create a basic Facebook ad. Now the thing with Facebook ads, you have to be really careful how much money you're spending there. I'm going to show you a really low cost way, but if you're not bringing in income from a different way like a job or some other source of income that you may have, I actually stay away from paid traffic and just concentrate on the free traffic because it's going to cost you a lot of money just to learn how to do this. So if you're on a budget, you're better off just using the free organic traffic until you get like a winning design that you can try out. But yeah, let's get into Facebook now. So the first thing you want to do is create a Facebook business manager. Now I'm going to try to create everything from scratch because I just want to show you guys how it is from the start. I'm not sure. Facebook might not actually let me create another business manager because I already have like seven of them. Create an account. It's called Hustle Me. Okay, so I create a new email. Then you put your business details here, just put your address or whatever. Okay, <laughs> I can't create I can't create a new business manager, but that's how you do it. That's how you do it. I just opened up uh, one of my spare business managers to show how to create a Facebook ad. Okay, so this is what a Facebook business manager looks like. So you're gonna want to put your details in here, and the main thing you're gonna want to do right in the start is go to data sources and click pixels. So if you don't have a pixel yet, you want to click add. Name your pixel. Let's call this hustle made. Click continue. So, so made. So here's the pixel. You can just go here, click that. And what you want to do is go to back to manage your domain. Click settings. Go all the way down. Under Facebook pixel ID, you want to put that in there. So the reason you're doing that is so that Facebook can track sales on their ad platform. So this is very important. The other thing you want to do is go to pages. And you're going to want to create a new page for your business. So click add. Create a new page. Uh, I usually pick brand or product or yeah, I usually pick brand or product, page name, I call it hustle made, choose category, I usually just choose website, create page. And you can click view page and then edit it if you want. So you can add a cover and all that. I'm just going to pick a random one that we already have created. And you can use Canva to do all this stuff. Anything with manipulating images, creating images, you can just use Canva for. Save that. Add a profile pic. Oh, what is that? Story now. Upload a photo. So it's too small, you know, you, you'd want to create it. I'm not going to go through Canva just to create a profile pic just to show you how to use it. 
But here's your page. You can add a button and do a bunch of other stuff to your page. But basically, you just need a page to run ads from. Next, go to ad accounts. If you don't have an ad account, you just click add and create one. Uh, I'm just going to use this old one that I have over here. I typically just use this ad account just to get traffic to my YouTube videos. One other thing too that a lot of people run into is make sure under users, people, under your own name, uh, make sure you have access to all these ad sets by the, the ad accounts and the page. So you want to click add assets. So hustle made and I'm going to put admin access. Save changes, done. And then make sure you have the same kind of access on your pixel, the one you just created. Yeah, no one's connected. Add people, add yourself, and any partners or anything like that. Add an access assign. So now you can use the pixel along with the page to create an ad. Pick the pixel you just made, click add assets. and choose the ad account that you're planning to use after you created it. We're gonna use that one. Now we'll go back to ad accounts, open an ads manager. And we're gonna click create. You pick your marketing objective. If you wanna make sales, I always just pick conversions. You could pick traffic, but then Facebook's just going to send you a bunch of traffic that probably won't buy. And like, like I said, this is a very basic, I'm just showing you how to create an ad. Facebook ads is a whole, Facebook ads is a whole thing all on its own. And you, if you really want to dive deep, you're going to want to search for a whole step-by-step -step tutorials on using Facebook ads and really learning about it. So we pick that on the campaign, conversions, click continue. Here's where you select the pixel and do this hustle made pixel, choose event, we're gonna do purchase. Now you can verify your pixel later. And then here under audience, you would pick who you wanna target with the ad. So if we're doing a hustle entrepreneur niche, we would want to go under detailed targeting and type in, I don't know, people interested in Gary V or something. And here it shows you how big the audience is. Always uncheck this. So there's 16 million people in the world or in America that are interested in Gary V. So that's fine. I usually leave automatic placements. This is like, where do you want your ads to show? Like whether it's mobile on Instagram or what, I always leave it automatic. This is like your budget. I always recommend going to $5 budget, especially if you're a beginner. You don't want to spend more than $5 a day. Click continue. And then this is where you'll pick the page that you're going to run the ad from. Also made. Then you'll create the ad. You can pick either a carousel ad, a single image ad, or a collection ad. Like I said, Facebook is really, really deep. You know, if you want to get good at this, you're gonna have to watch more than just this quick video on it. Let's just do single image. Then you can add your media. I'm just gonna pick one of the images we have. Let's go with this. And I'm gonna click automatically crop to square. And that's how the ad's gonna show. Now, Facebook uses square images, so you can also use Canva and create your specific ad however you wanna create it. And then you can add text over here so we can say, check out the hottest streetwear trends 
today. Limited edition designs. And this is where you'll put your website. I'm kind of doing like a brand ad for them to check out the brand, but say you open a general store, you want to try specific designs, you would want to create your link directly to the specific design. Right there. So here you can see how it looks in everything. So luck or learn more. Then you can change the call to action. Usually you want to do shop now. Ooh, yeah, we didn't even mention that's for entrepreneurs. Trends for entrepreneurs. Tracking, tracking set up already. Uh, then you want to click confirm, and that's it. Your ad's gonna be live. So, so Facebook has an AI review process that they're gonna see, make sure your ad is compliant, and then as soon as it passes review, it becomes active, usually within a day, and then your ad is live, and it's gonna start showing to people. So that's basically it. We're able to create this from scratch. Now clearly this is a basic introduction. Any of those traffic sources that you wanna learn more about, you're gonna to have to dive in deep and you're gonna to have to put in the work. And if you do wanna start with Facebook ads, Facebook ads, you're gonna really have to go down the rabbit hole and spend hours learning and testing with Facebook ads for you to learn every little thing about it. But that's basically how to start a clothing brand with no money. Uh, I think I covered most of the things that I wanted to cover. If you guys have any questions, leave me any comments below. If this is the kind of stuff you like, let me know so I can create more of this. If you got value off this, forget to like, subscribe, and share it with a friend. So that's it for today. I'll see you guys next time.